Okay, Cobbers, History Nerd 1942 here, and today we're going to be going through the history of the Australian Army Cadets. So um, some people might be asking, what is the Australian Army Cadets? Well, the Australian Army Cadets is a youth development organisation based in Australia. Uh, it is between the, it's for teenagers, or young children between the age of 12 and a half to 17. But the question some people ask is, where did cadets originate from? How long have cadets been in Australia? And what are the types of cadets, or cadet units, in Australia? We'll be answering these questions and a lot more in uh, today's video, so stick around. The Australian Army Cadets have existed in Australia for well over 100 years, with the first unit being established back in 1866. The unit was established by Reverend Farewell MacArthur at St Mark's College at School in New South Wales. Unlike its British counterpart, the Australian Army Cadets developed on its own accord and independently. This means it did not have a direct correlation from the Army and did not stem from the Army. St Mark's College at School had introduced military drills into their syllabus, much like other schools around Sydney and 72 of its pupils were enrolled in the Parramatta Voluntary Rifles. However, MacArthur was influenced to create the Cadet Corps from a member of his staff who had been to England and had observed the success of public schools operating in cadet training schemes. MacArthur justified his creation of the Cadet Corps based off these principles. The first one was to create in the minds and habits of our youth a desire and aptitude for the service of the country. Fewer accidents would occur or arise from the incautious use of firearms if the youth were trained, much like the military, on how to be disciplined and be careful with the firearms. Promotion to the use of the rifle in the Corps would impart an interest in the daily drill spirit whereby the lads would become valuable members of the volunteer force. However, the glory of St Mark's was short-lived. In 1968, Reverend MacArthur was made headmaster of the King's School. However, the continuity of the cadet unit was continued. And in August of 1968, Royal Assent was given to change the title of the court to the King's School Cadet Corps in 1869. This unit is still running today and boasts the longest history of, of the Australian Army Cadet Unit. At around this time, other state schools began to take notice of the popularity of cadet units and the cadet system entirely and began to raise their own units. Because of this, the total strength of cadets in New South Wales increased from under 200 in 1870 to 860 in 1871. Military drill was introduced into the public school syllabus and the first inspection of the senior boys of Fort Street School occurred in June of 1870. Now, the origins of army cadets is debated amongst people of Australia, uh, particularly between New South Wales and Victoria. Some people in Victoria believe that Victoria had the idea stemming from a school that started military drill, but it wasn't an official cadet unit, where the first official cadet unit was established in Australia, in correction, established in New South Wales. But in 1872, the New South Wales Council of Education decided that the teachers who were not trained in military drill or military tactics shall be trained in military drill in order to teach their pupils how to, how to do it, especially with this new syllabus coming in. That way, there are no gaps with teachers who do not know what they're teaching. At the same time, in 1874, uh, Orange and Mudgee got their first uh, cadet units. And the, the following year, 1875, cadet units started popping up in Liverpool, Richmond and Windsor. Around this time, Parramatta also started getting their own cadet corps units. Um, and in 1883, there were a total of 22 state school units with more private schools establishing their own units. The first Catholic school unit was established in 1885 at St Ignatius College. movement was becoming rapidly popular amongst children and teenagers, particularly in Australia's eastern colonies, mainly Queensland, New South Wales and Victoria. However, the depression of the 1890s resulted in a number of schools around these colonies abandoning their units due to lack of funds. But how did the cadet movement become so popular in the first place? And well, there are a few reasons to explain why the movement gained so much traction. However, the most common reason would be the fear of war that was spread throughout the colonies. Another reason would be the popularity of rifle shooting competitions, and that most certainly helped to encourage the establishment of cadet units. 
as well as the presence of British troops in the colonies added to the natural tendency for boys wanting to play soldiers. Cadet units slowly expanded into other colonies of Australia, starting in New South Wales and moving to Queensland, Victoria as previously mentioned. Queensland, Tasmania, however, were slow to start developing their cadet units, but they weren't necessarily very far behind. Launceston Church Grammar School and the Hutchins School in Hobart raised their cadet units in 1885, although a cadet element of voluntary rifles may have existed in the year prior. As far as I've known from my research, there is no solid evidence to suggest that the cadet elements of the voluntary rifles existed. So I said may. It's a bit of hit or miss. As the century turned into the 1900s, South Australia and Western Australia raised their first units. What were the cadets trained in? Cadets were trained in rifle shooting, field craft, military drill. Activities included encampments, bivouacs, battalion camps, rifle competitions, parades, and by far my most favorite thing I want to do, mock battles. I wish we still did these, but we don't. A uh, mock battle would be a battle between traditionally two cadet units and there would be some sort of objective using the tactics of the time. Like in one instance, there was a mock battle between the cadets from Ipswich and Brisbane, where the Ipswich cadets had to protect the township of Ips Ipswich from the invading Brisbane cadets. I really wish we still did stuff like that. Many of the cadet units that were disbanded because of the economic depression of the 1890s were reformed just before Federation in 1901. When the Commonwealth of Australia federated on the 1st of January 1901, the Australian military forces became a federal responsibility. However, all the states kept the responsibility of their own cadet units. So for example, New South Wales looked after New South Wales cadet units and Queensland looked after Queensland cadet units. Federally, there was no plan for cadets to be a federal matter up until 1906. On the 16th of July 1906, the Commonwealth Cadet Corps was formed. Under the Defence Act of 1910, the Commonwealth Cadet Corps was embodied in the Universal Military Training Scheme. Now, that sort of made cadets compulsory. So it was due to this service in the junior cadets was compulsory. And boys between the ages of 14 and 18 were deemed medically fit or who were deemed medically fit were able to join the Australian Army Cadets and that's how they could do their service. As a result of this scheme, the CCC, which is the Commonwealth Cadet Corps, rose to a total strength of 142,758 cadets, the most cadets that Australia has seen at any one time. However, in a sad turn of events, in 1914, the First World War broke out, which saw many of those cadets rush to enlist in the Australian Imperial Force, often lying about their age to get in. Following the end of the war in 1918, cadets remained pretty much the same up until 1929. As in 1929, the Universal Military Training Scheme was suspended or abandoned. This made cadets no longer compulsory, but then that sort of created the issue of what, what would the government do with cadets. So instead, the government introduced the Voluntary Milit Militia Training Scheme or system. The cadets of the CCC were divided into two categories for purposes of training. These categories consisted of Category 1 consisted of regimental detachments of senior cadets often affiliated with units of the militia being established. The age of enrolment for this category was from 16 to 18. However, the cadet was required to give an assurance that upon reaching the age of 18 he would continue to serve with the militia on a voluntary age. So basically that was saying you would, ser you would serve your two years from 16 to 18 with the cadets. However, once you've graduated in 18, or once you hit 18, you'll then continue to serve with the militia, which is what you do see a lot of people doing. And up until, it's called the militia period um, between the Australian historical community in some respects, which you start to see up the build up of the Second World War where there wasn't many permanent regiments of the Australian army at that time. Category two, consisted of senior cadets that were not affiliated with other units of the militia. They consisted of cadets attending approved educational facilities with a minimum age of being 14 years of age. So we still haven't seen the community stretch as cadets is today. It's all relatively school-based.
Cadets continued to operate this way well into the 1930s, but in September of 1939, the Second World War broke out, and Australia found itself fighting another world war. Due to this, the need of experienced instructors skyrocketed. They needed instructors that were able to teach the soldiers how to actually fight. So regimental cadet detachments were disbanded as the staff were needed elsewhere. Some school-based units were still able to operate, but they had very limited supplies. Cadet activities continued and with the threat of invasion looming, some cadets were trained more with rifles and defensive strategies, indicating that if worse came the worse, it was possible that the cadets could be used. Personally, I think this was more or less meant for the older cadets, 17, 18, who could join the army, because I can't see the Australian government putting young kids to fight, but it's out there. However, during June of 1941, action was taken to appoint an officer with a small staff in each state military district for the purpose of controlling cadet activities. This was the first sign during the war that cadets would be coming back. This was incredibly successful. Like, for example, in September of 1939, cadets was about 4,600 strong, but by October 42, they had 10,000, and then in January 44, they had 13,000 members. Also in December of 1944, the government approved the issue of uniforms to cadets at the cost of the Australian taxpayer. Conditions for cadets continued to improve and equipment became more available due, due to production catching up with demand. Rifles became available allowing cadets to reintroduce the shooting competitions and more camps and bids were authorised. This also occurred because training facilities were extended. Annual cadet camps or AFX standing for F annual field exercise was given approval in May of 1945 and with all expenses being paid from public funds. This was done by a vote of the army. After the Second World War, it was intended that all cadet units would have some sort of affiliation with the CMF or Citizens Military Forces. The CCC unofficially became known as the Australian Cadet Corps, with school units being organised into battalions and brigades based off geographical army command. A lot of that structure still exists to, to this day. The title Australian Cadet Corps was officially adopted in the Commonwealth of Australia Gazette, number 59 of 1951. Now, not many people know about this, particularly within the AAC, AAC especially today, um, which I've seen from my first-hand experience, is that the Australian Army Cadets actually had a Colonel-in-Chief, which was no one else except his late Royal Highness, the Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh. On the 24th of May, 1963, Field Marshal, His Royal Highness, Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh, KC, KT, OM, GBE, became the first Colonel-in-Chief of the Australian Army Cadets. He kept this role up until his death earlier in 2020. One. As of now, there isn't an official Colonel-in-Chief that I could find um, that has replaced his late Royal Highness. For just under seven years later, the Duke of Edinburgh presented his personal banner to a parade representing the corps of around 46,000 cadets in Australia. In 1970, he presented his personal banner to the cadets. Jumping forward, uh, cadets operate relatively the same. It's under the Australian Cadet Corps that they had a new emblem. This new emblem, I've actually got an original patch here. It is a bit folded, but this is what it looked like. This would have been worn on their sleeves. Uh, depending which way I go, I believe this is a right one. Right one, so I'll go on the right because the torch always goes forward. Sorry, it would be left. It would be a left one. Um, so on the right ones, the, the sword and the torch would flip places. But as you can see, it says Australian Cadet Corps. It has um, St. Edward's crown representing Her Majesty the Queen. Um, on the blue background. Now there are examples of this worn on the Pattern 43 battle dress. Uh, I, my last video was about an actual Pattern 43 battle dress that was made for cadets that I have restored to be sort of World War II for a project I'm working on. Jumping forward to 1975, the government, the Whitlam government, suspended the Corps. However, it was re-raised in October of 1976 by the Fraser government. Following the ACC being raised, ACC being Australian Cadet Corps, uh, females were allowed to join the cadets. In 
1984 cadet units were encouraged to spread into the community rather than remain with their schools. So this is known as the Regimental Cadet Unit Scheme. This is where the abbreviation RCU comes from. I was under the interpretation it means reg uh, correction, Royal Cadet Unit, when in fact it means Regional Cadet Unit. So school units were given the opportunity to expand and become full support units, which is units that are in the community that receive full support from the Australian Army, where that support will consist of funding, uh, uniforms, equipment, all that sort of stuff where the schools that chose to remain school units were known as limited support units, where they would receive little, if any, uh, support from the army, and they would get use all their activities and all that sort of stuff from their own private funds. In 1993, the Australian Cadet Corps changed to the Australian Army Cadet Corps, with the abbreviation remaining ACC. I've got some patches from that era. So this was the 90s. So, a few major differences. The material is a lot more thick. If I get the other one up, you can see the difference. It's got a nice border, and it's a lot more rigid and thick compared to them. Also, it no longer has Australian at the top, all the wording's at the bottom, and it's removed the crown with the Rising Sun badge, which has sort of become the symbol of Australian Army Cadets as well, apart from the regimental hat badges. Now, some new regimental hat badges also came in. Here are some of them here. Uh, this is a hat badge, and it two sets of collar badges. These are outdated as it does say Australian Army Cadet Corps. These will be seen on the top of the slouch hats in some cases where you see them. You can also see them in officers hat badges. Now some schools have their own or some cadet units have their own hat badges and all that that they wear but these were the core badges that were for the entire corps. In 1998 the limited support units were accorded full support status and then were given full support from the army. So eventually after the gap where the units had sort of established themselves the army continued to support full uh, support school units. Now there is a friendly rivalry within the Australian Army Cadets between school units and community units, with one side claiming they are better than the other. It really depends on point of view. Um, yeah, point of view has their own beliefs on that uh, argument, so to speak. In 2001, there was a great change with the cadet system with all three services of cadets coming under control of defence and forming the Australian Defence Force Cadets. All three services also changed their names with the Australian Army Cadet Corps being changed to Australian Army Cadets, which we all know today. The Australian Reserve, sorry, correction, Naval Reserve Cadets changing to Australian Navy Cadets or ANC and the Air Training Corps to Australian Air Force Cadets or AAFC. We also had a new hat badge for the Australian Army Cadets is this one, this is the one that's most commonly known uh, because it was in for so long. Uh, it's very mo much more modern than the previous it one. It still features the sword and torch, although it has a wreath and a scroll. The scroll reads courage, initiative, teamwork, respect, which is the Australian Army Cadets uh, values, as well as Australian Army Cadets at the bottom. At the top, uniting it all is the Rising Sun badge, which reads the Australian Army with the crown in the center. As of 2016, there are around 25,000 Australian Defence Force cadets and officers or instructors. 16,000 of those belong to the AAC, AAC, consisting of 256 cadet units. Now, some are being established um, as in the future, so that number is likely to change. In 2019, there's a cadet emblem change, so the cadets changed their emblem, and therefore this hat badge became outdated with, and it was replaced with this hat badge. This hat badge looks a lot more modern and much more militaristic, like it actually belongs on the um, sloucher, like it's a military corps, uh, where this one did to an extent, but looking at them after a while, I've sort of warmed up to this one, although this is still one of my favorites out of the three. So that practically sums up the history of Australian Army Cadets. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully this will help you with your cadet careers if you guys are in cadets or just out of curiosity. Um, it's good to know Australian cadet history. So, um, yeah, leave a like, subscribe, all that sort of good stuff, and I'll see you guys in the next video. See yous.